I moved to Calgary in early 2019. And I started following my son around the disc golf course for the first couple months while I was here. And I met a whole lot of great people. In early, early spring, my son gave me a few discs and taught me how to throw them. And I've been playing every chance I get ever since. Sometimes as many as six to eight rounds of 18 in a week. Hi, my name is Melba Sito and I've been playing disc golf for about four to five years now. I find whenever people see a female disc golfer, they always assume that their boyfriend, husband, or some guy introduced them to the sport. But I think it's important for a lot of women to know that um, I'm a disc golfer in my own right, and I'm the one that plays the tournaments in my family. I have the PDGA membership, so just because you're a woman, it doesn't mean that someone dragged you into it. You can love disc golf on your own. My mom started playing disc golf, and then I saw her throw, and I'm like, whoa, that's far. And then ever since then, I'm like, I want to try that out. And on and on and on for about two and a half years, I would say, three and a half or something. Um, I've been throwing and it's been really good. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Faces of Calgary Sport and we are featuring disc golf. I'm Katrina LeMaydone, I'm the president and CEO of Sport Calgary. And for those of you who are uh, joining us for the first time, this is uh, an a virtual intro to sport. So um, in normal times, uh, we don't even know what that means anymore. Pre-COVID, we were doing All Sport One Day, All Sport One City, which was a hands-on introduction to youth and to adults for sport. So in this time, we're doing virtual and we want to introduce you to various sports around the community. So this is our fourth edition. And as I mentioned, uh, it's disc golf. We have a great panel. Um, I wanna first give everybody a breakdown of who registered, because I think it's important to know who the people are um, who are participating, who are watching. And again, we are recording this and it will be posted on Sport Calgary's website. So of the registrants, um, just over half have seen the sport, know, know nothing about it, uh, but have seen and heard of it. About 3% have watched it online or on TV, which is a question for my panelists that is, is I, I guess it'd be online, but I, I, haven't, I haven't Googled it enough, so I, I need to ask that one. And uh, about 42% have tried it, um, or are actively involved. So there's some knowledge within our registrants. Um, and I guess I would fall into that. I, I've kind of tried it, I think my version of it. So uh, I'm excited to, to have this conversation and learn more. So let me introduce everybody to the panel. First, we have a Mo Melissa Bright. She's a New Zealander who has been in Canada for eight years. Now she's only been involved in disc golf since August of 2020. But in the short seven months that she's, she has become hooked on disc golf, she's heavily involved in the growth of the game through her volunteer efforts with the Calgary Disc Golf Club. She's an avid tournament and event participant and her enthusiasm and energy represents the future and direction of the sport. And she was looking forward to the exciting upcoming season. And uh, just from that first intro video, I'm excited to talk about um, women's leagues and women participation in this sport as well. So thank you, Melissa. Next, we have James Koizumi. I hope that I said that right, James. Um, extremely involved and highly respected member of the disc golf community. James has been playing disc golf for about three years, first introduced to the sport by his brother-in-law. With James' passionate personality, he soon found himself heavily involved and in working closely with the Calgary Disc Golf Board, taking the lead on various projects that have boosted the growth of the sport in Calgary and uniting the community. I think that's a key when we can unite the community. James has been involved in many projects and empowers other players to get involved by starting junior programs, coordinating beginner clinics, mentoring female players to start a women's league and working on course design. When James is not disc golfing, he enjoys hockey, bouldering and traveling. And once restrictions are lifted, James is eager to incorporate his passions and look forward to continue to play courses throughout the world. Thank you, James, and welcome. And finally, we have Rob McLeod. So Frisbee Rob, that's how many people know him. He's a motivational speaker, Frisbee ambassador. 
He has been to listen to this more than 400 schools. He has taught Frisbee to more than 130,000 students throughout 5,000 workshops. He has six Guinness World Records, 13 World Championships, and the Canadian Distance Record. Rob has been playing Frisbee for 20 years, disc golf for 10 years, and is sponsored by Innova Discs as an ambassador for the last five years. Rob is on the education committee with the Canadian Disc Golf Association, a board member and chair of the overall committee with the World Flying Disc Association, and is actively involved with clubs and volunteers all over Alberta and Canada to help grow the sport, get disc golf and frisbee into schools. Very important, let's get that into schools run clinics and workshops and help introduce new players to the game and help more experienced players take their games to the next level. So welcome to our panelists. Thanks you guys for, uh, for joining us today. Um, Rob, I'm gonna start with you because it's, it's something I struggle with. And again, I'm coming in with questions that have been sent in from participants, questions that, that I have and questions. And if people have questions, put them in the chat and we will try to get to them. Um, in your introduction, there's a lot on Frisbee, there's a lot on disc. Are they the same thing? Because I have no idea. Yeah, um, so the best way that I like to explain it is Frisbee is like track and field. So there's multiple disciplines. And so disc golf is just one of the disciplines. It happens to be, at this point in the world, it's the most popular discipline for sure. Um, but it's, that's why I really find it important to introduce Frisbee. And then we get into disc golf the throwing and the catching people can play catch with themselves they can play catch with a dog and there's a lot of wonderful ways to have fun with the frisbee and so it's you can use it as you know frisbee is a sport or frisbee is an object that you actually throw um, and we'll get into it in a bit but this is actually a frisbee this is from whammo and then a golf disc so it's very different shapes um, you can also have a disc that's more shaped like this so you really don't want to catch a golf disc but a Frisbee is safe to catch and you can have a lot of fun with it. And so one of the things in schools that's important is if you're getting a disc for disc golf, it's not going to work well for ultimate Frisbee. So if, if a phys ed class is buying basketballs, they're not going to play soccer with those basketballs. They're going to go buy soccer balls. And so it can be overwhelming sometimes for phys ed teachers or just people in general, because for them to buy a disc for every discipline, is not going to happen and so if they can just get one disc then it's good to get a disc that you can play catch with you can play disc golf with that as well um, during covid there's been a lot of ultimate frisbee players actually start playing disc golf with an ultimate disc then when they get into it more they realize golf discs actually fly a lot further and uh, it's a lot more interesting so maybe you know they start moving to that um, as they get into it i liked your analogy with uh with the basketball right you're not going to use a soccer ball but okay quick question before i i move on to melissa but i have used just a frisbee to to play that that's i mean it might be frowned upon but i guess it works doesn't it you have yeah you have to be careful so there's a lot of schools that have you know flying disc that's just made by some random company usually in china um they can make them you know plastic injection for like five cents but a disc that is not designed very well will not fly very well. So Frisbees by, made by Whammo, certain ones um, will fly very well, but we're getting into the point where there's multiple different kinds of plastics. There's plastics that actually glow in the dark so people can do glow, glow golf. So there's a lot of options and it can be very overwhelming. Um, and James actually has been very instrumental in introducing people what discs are good to get started with. Um, but it can, be, it can be a lot because there may be like three brands of basketballs, but Within disc golf, within Frisbee, there's 40, 50, 60 manufacturers, different kinds of plastics and weights and colors, and it can be a lot. So um, throwing a well-designed Frisbee is definitely okay. Um, for a lot of people, it's a lot cheaper and you're just getting started with one, but then you start getting into it a little bit more. I have over a thousand Frisbees. A friend of mine has 40,000. So we use, we use them interchangeably, but really the best thing is to just find something that flies well. And then as you get better at throwing, you can start leveling up to something that will um, be able to go a bit further um, with a bit more power. Okay. Okay. James, we'll talk in a little bit about, uh, yeah, the, the, the different kinds, 40,000. How do you even have 40,000 of anything? <laughs> uh, Melissa, I'm going to ask you, so you've only been involved uh, for seven months. So how did you kind of discover it and, and what, what drew you to it and, and what made you fall in love with it so much? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I've only been 
playing disc golf since August of last year. Um, I've, a friend introduced me to it. Um, he typically, uh, when we go camping, sets up courses around the campsite. I was never really interested. Uh, I'd rather sit by the fire. And um, it wasn't until August that he actually kind of convinced me to come out to um, David Richardson Memorial, which is up in the north, uh, Northwest. Um, where I shot a plus 40. <laughs> so I didn't even know how to throw a disc at that point. Um, and then a couple of days later, yeah, James uh, happened to be hosting a beginner's clinic where there was a variety of volunteers from the disc golf community um, just volunteering their time and their knowledge and um, just teaching the fundamentals of disc golf. Um, I've since been back to David Richardson Memorial and shot personal best of plus 15. So I think <laughs> as satisfying as seeing the improvement, um, I would say what's kind of drawn me in is the community. Um, everyone is so supportive, so friendly, um, everyone's so willing to help. Awesome, thanks. Um, so James, um, Melissa's talking about beginner clinics. So. Uh, a couple questions. With COVID, um, are those happening? And, and, and how do people first start? I mean, let's pretend that the beginner clinics can happen, and I'm going to let you explain if they can, or, or perhaps we don't exactly know when things are be lifted. But what do people need? Do they need to go buy something? If they do, what are they looking for? I think that's where we'll start right there. To your question earlier, I think whether it's a Frisbee, or whether it's a disc golf disc, we just want to get people out throwing. And I think from that, uh, you'll get instantly hooked one way or the other. Like Melissa said, um, you know, the improvement, or like Rob said, just being fascinated with flight, no matter what type of disc that is, I think that's what we want. Um, you know, in terms of the clinics and the way people get started, I think right now it's uh, just people you know, um, only mostly because of COVID, but uh, disc golf is exploding so rapidly, seeing growth anywhere from maybe two and a half to five percent last year and then another two and a half to five uh, five not five percent five times sorry this year you're almost getting a curve very similar to you know what they anticipated with COVID um, with respect to the beginner clinics and things like that you know always um, following the provincial guidelines um, looking we're, we're always monitoring um, you know what the different uh, COVID protocols and restrictions are and and falling within and within those guidelines currently now we've taken a st step back to stage one um, which is completely understandable but at the same point in time uh, disc golf uh, mirrors uh, you know its cousin ball golf or stick golf or however you want to call it regular traditional golf where those courses if you drive by any of them now those parking lots are full um, they've operated very successfully last year during covid and we anticipate disc golf will, will be the same this year as well Okay, yeah, we look forward to, and again, if people are, are not aware, we are always staying on top of um, the restrictions, the guidelines, and posting that and helping sport groups try to coordinate. Um, Rob, James is saying about it's learning how to throw, and it's the fun of it. Um, I'm going to tell you, I've been out at one of the disc parks with my kids, and uh, it's a little bit like traditional golf. I mean, you want to see me curse? I I'm going out on, uh, <laughs> even on the Frisbee course because, you know, how does a beginner, if, if clinics aren't happening right now, I mean, my disc is, it's not going straight. I'm literally going to aim, you know, way over there because it goes sideways. And especially if there's a wind, which there seems to be wind all the time. How do people even go out and, and start to learn this before these beginner clinics? Or is it just, trial and error. Yeah, so it's surprisingly complex to actually throw a disc. You're seeing it become similar to golf now where there's tons of people posting videos and you know all these ideas and people coming up with different theories. But for me, I just try and make it as simple as possible. That's only possible because I've done so many workshops. I used to have it very complicated, but now it's very simple. Um, frisbee, a Frisbee or disc is like, we always say part wing, part parachute, part gyroscope. And so it likes to have a lot of spin. So a big thing that a lot of people are not doing is snapping their wrist and actually putting spin on the, on the disc or the Frisbee. And so that's the biggest thing you can do is snap your wrist, put a lot of spin on it. Um, if you're finding that you're throwing it flat and it's turning right or left, then you might wanna go down a bit. So if it's a, a driver, if it's a mid range, go down to a putter. 
So if you can start throwing that disc flat and it stays flat, then that's a good disc for you. Um, it's very similar to golf. The first thing we learn to try and do is hit the ball straight. Sometimes it's gonna you know, hook or slice. And then as we get better, we can actually make the ball fade or drop. We can actually do it on purpose. And so same kind of thing with disc golf. First, you're just trying to throw it flat and straight and then you start learning to actually make a curve. Um, and it's, it is a wonderful thing to watch a disc actually move through the air, but just start off with the very basics. Just hold it in your hand. A grip is important. Snap your wrist, put a lot of spin on it and uh, just get out and just keep playing. The best thing you can do is just practice. Of course, and I'm sure I don't do that enough. <laughs> um, so let, let's talk, Melissa, where we can go. Um, you know, we, we hear about some of the, the disc golf parks, but can you give a sort of an overview of, of how do people access them? Where are they, et cetera? Yeah, there's sort of various courses throughout the city. Um, the most popular one being Baker Park. Um, bonus uh, but we've got ones in almost every quadrant of the city um, the best resource to see where uh, the courses are would be uh, it's an app called UDIS so it's got a map um, of all the courses it's got all the details of the course as well okay awesome and then um, let's briefly talk about the women's participation. So Melissa, I'm going to go back to you. Uh, are there women's leagues or is this something you guys are talking about creating? And uh, because it's intimidating for a lot of females uh, to come out to a sport that, uh, and I'm not sure if disc golf is, is more um, sort of male dominant or, or, or not, but, um, oh, and we have the, uh, just so everybody knows the chat, uh, we will have all of this posted on our website as well, but in the chat, there is the, uh, there is a link there. Uh, for for the map. So, um, Melissa, can you talk on that side on, on female involvement? I mean, it was great to see little young Tessa talking in that first yeah. video as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so disc golf, like a lot of active sports, are female, oh, sorry, are male um, driven. Um, so we are trying to boost and empower the uh, females in disc golf. There will be a league coming this year. Um, depending on COVID restrictions, but yes, the Women's League is going to run from June to September, uh, where it's going to be a uh, non-competitive league, you're kind of um, competing against yourself. Um, and sorry, yes, uh, yeah, so it's, it's going to be great. Perfect. Okay, well, we'll keep, uh, you know, and as, as you guys start that and more information comes out, we'll help inform the community uh, about that. Uh, James, when Melissa's talking about some of the places you can play, is it open? I mean, until, until we can do, you can do clinics again, do people register for a club? Can they just show up? How does it work? Is it, is it booked at a certain time for the club? Because again, that becomes a bit of the issue about, you know, if everybody's, the numbers are, are getting really high, which is great for participation, but is it get too busy? One of the biggest attractions of disc golf is the accessibility and, you know, given demands on time and scheduling and things like that. Uh, disc golf is super accessible even even just to start out um, being able to play at a, a local park or throw at a, a local field just to get a, a feel for the game maybe you might feel intimidated or just want to try out some discs or some, try out some shots with your family but in terms of the actual disc golf parks once you've attended there's no registration or booking of tee times um, usually it's just sort of on a just an etiquette system you know if there's a lineup waiting in line or if there's groups that are faster let them play through um, so we're very fortunate that because, you know, given a busy schedule, trying to book that tea time to get out there after work or something like that, but things interfere, you know, you not, might not be able to make it, but with disc golf, um, as Rob and Melissa might attest to, sometimes I'm late. It's nice that there's not tea times <laughs> because, uh, you know, you can, you can get in there. And the other thing too, um, Katrina is we're very fortunate that the cost for disc golf is right now, mostly free. There's some park memberships, which, honestly are, are very minimal relative to the maintenance of, the, uh, of what the people that are taking care of these parks are, are, are. but our city of Calgary parks are free. Um, there's the model in the United States that's coming where there are some pay for disc golf parks, but at a fraction of what regular uh, golf is costing here, you know, even to maximum, maybe five or $10 a round 
at most, and that's in the U.S. So on all of those fronts, um, disc golf definitely, definitely has the convenience and accessibility going for it. Well, that's great to hear because I think that's that's one of the biggest things, not just um, post COVID as we come out of it is, you know, everybody's concerned financially and, and rightly so, but uh, it, that inclusivity side about, um, you know, you don't know what your day is going to look like necessarily. And all of a sudden you decide as a family or as an individual, okay, I want to go out and play. Uh, Rob, how, I mean, when I look at your resume, I mean, it's, I didn't know there were world records and world championships and all of that. How big is this sport? Is it within Canada? I mean, I, I don't know about other cities and is it as big and, and where is it around the world? Is it everywhere? Great question. So, so WIFDIF, which is the, the board that I'm on, the World Flying Disc Federation, we now have over, I think we're at 93 national federations. And we're actually trying to get ultimate Frisbee in the Olympics, the LA Olympics in 2028. Um, but disc golf, the number one country for disc golf is Finland. They have a population of about 6 million people. And there are more, more people playing disc golf than hockey in Finland. So there's wow. more than a quarter of a million people in Finland playing disc golf, which is just kind of mind blowing. Um, they also have the most courses per capita. They have over 800 courses in Finland. And so it's, it's amazing because like James mentioned, so accessible you can be traveling with a couple of discs in your bag or just buy them when you get there you can just pop onto a course you don't have to worry about booking tea times anything like that memberships you can just go to a course best courses in the world you know i played a course um, in santa cruz that's known as one of the best in the world and i think it costs five bucks unbelievable that it's just that accessible um but yeah it's it's hard to get a count on the numbers because most people I'm going to throw out a stat, but 95%, 99% of disc golfers do not play tournaments. And so most people that play, we don't even know. And so what we're trying to do, I know Calgary has done an amazing job. And I just heard a number recently of how many memberships have already sold. So that's one thing they're trying to start doing is sell memberships. And then you can actually get a number on it. But um, I, I would, I've told people 10,000 people in Calgary play disc golf. I'm not really sure of that number. I know the number roughly for soccer is about 50,000. Um, so it's, and it's not like we're better than soccer, we're more accessible. We're just focused on what we do and the benefits that we have. There's a lot of disc golfers that play soccer or a lot of disc golfers that came from soccer. And so it's, it's growing very quickly to put it in perspective the the top disc golf in the world just signed a, a 10 year deal worth $10 million. Um, and he's probably going to actually go through that just this year because of the number of discs being sold. So it's actually kind of mind blowing just what's possible um, with disc golf and how quickly it's growing. And manufacturers can't even print enough discs. They're running at like 700% capacity. I'm sponsored and it's hard for me to even get discs for my sponsor. Um, they're running their, their manufacturing 24 seven um, all over the world. So it's, it's an unprecedented time for disc golf for sure, just because it's so easy to physically distance. Many schools are getting into it. Um, it's it's a really good time, so we'll see what happens the next uh, the next six months, the next couple of years for sure. Um, but it's I, I wrote an article seven reasons disc golf is better than golf, and I grew up as a golfer. My whole family's golf, but I haven't played golf in maybe two rounds of golf in the last ten years. Well, the the, pr the price of uh, <laughs> a disc golf round is definitely more attractive, and hearing contracts like that, I'll just say that I, I picked the wrong sport, that's for sure, <laughs> back in my time. Um, Melissa, you know, Rob's talking about accessing discs. You have in the background, uh, I see a, um, a, a, is it a basket? Is that the right it's word? A basket. It's a basket, yes. okay. So, um, you know, if people were to practice, and so, yes, ideally outside, but is there a difference between indoor discs, outdoor discs, and as Rob's talking about difficulty to buy discs, where can you get them in, in Calgary? Um, you know, because if people want to go out and start to try this, I think that's going to be one of the key things. H how do you, how do you do it? Right? Like it's, you just walk into a store and say, I want some discs and they'll look at you going, what do you want? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can walk into any uh, disco bin, uh, retailer um and they're so so helpful so we have a couple of here and um, most of them are online um so we've got disc flow uh dance hobby shop life sport and switching gear 
but then there's so many online as well, which are uh, like Beads Runners, Okanagan Disc Supply, like just to name a few really, but everyone is so, so, so helpful. Awesome. And I see, uh, Rob, thank you for putting um, a website up as well. Again, all of these links, you guys will have them if you don't get to them, but uh, um, just some different information on that. Um, James, I'm going to ask a question. Uh, you talked about etiquette. So I know the couple times that I've gone to uh, the Royal Oak um, this park, uh, there have not been a ton of people and my doodles don't chase discs. So I have brought my dogs and there's lots of trees and they've never bothered anybody. Is that, um, when we talk about etiquette, is it the wrong thing to do? And I, it does, it's okay, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think disc golf is, is a very accepting sport. It really, you know, leaves some of the formalities of regular golf or traditional golf behind um you know keeping in mind obviously there are some parks or some areas that require that dogs be on leash or maybe you know dogs are prohibited but you know certainly that's that's part of the attraction is to be able to spend time with your family and your pets um and, and certain courses are allowed to be able to do that so um when it comes to etiquette i think one of the best ways to sort of do that i guess you can follow traditional golf if you're familiar with that but even if you're not and you're really new to the game a lot of the things that we're talking about, either learning to throw or where to buy discs, things like that. I think the greatest selling feature of disc golf right now is our community. Uh, you know, I, we've talked about it briefly. The people in disc golf are phenomenal. And so I would recommend, you know, when we're looking for understanding a little bit about etiquette, you know, next time or when it's safe to do so, uh, you know, approach somebody that looks like they maybe kind of know what they're doing and say, hey, do you mind if I just join you? Or, um, you know, I just got this disc or where can I get a disc? Or can you little, tell me a little bit about the rules of etiquette? Uh, who, who shoots first or, um, you know, what, uh, what's the order for how we should play or things like that? And, and people are, are beyond accommodating, beyond has, hospitable. And I think that's a little bit of the Calgary spirit too flowing through. But at the same point in time, it's that combination of just the, uh, like Melissa said, that's really what addicted her to the game is, is the, how well the community supports each other. Awesome. Um, and I know last, uh, our last session, we had talked about uh, the Play City app. And if, if people don't have it, it's a great app and they've added disc golf um, to their app. So again, uh, Play City is a connector. So if you go on to the app, and you sign up and you put your level. So if you're a beginner or whatever, and, and if you do want to connect with people, and again, it's, it's you know, as James, as you said, it, it's about community. And if we're going to look at any silver linings from COVID, it's about having conversations. It's about stopping to judge each other, stopping, stopping judging ourselves. So we're all learning new things. And I think uh, that's a great thing to do. And we put the, uh, thank you, Sandra, for putting, Rebecca, for putting the Play City app um, website up as well. Rob, what are the actual rules? I mean, James is talking about, you know, finding somebody. Um, is it best to sign up or, you know, we're going to have a lot of people going out to try this and especially with the weather turning better. Um, where, where do people find the actual rules? Yeah. So if they want to get into the four rules, they can go to pdga.com. So the professional disc golf association governs the rules, um, has a rules committee, very similar to golf. You know, there, there are some rules that are specific to disc golf, but very similar to golf in terms of the etiquette, um, in terms of how you score, you know, instead of hitting a ball into a hole, you throw a disc into a basket or at a target. So we actually have a course um, outside of Drumheller and they're just big pipes and you have to hit the pipe. So it's, it's actually really cool. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, if you're getting to the national level of the world championships, you actually have to take a rules quiz. So you know the rules. Um, for the most part, disc golf is self-officiated. You know, we don't have somebody following you around telling you if you had a rules infraction. Um, you know, there's definitely people who will throw more than one throw. You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, James and Melissa both talked about this. Yeah, it's, we're just out there having fun. You know, everybody keeps scores differently. Some people take mulligans. Um, some people take gimmies, totally fine. Um, but it's just, you know, if you're playing in a tournament, there are certain rules about, 
you know, where you have to mark the disk and put faults and time violations and things like that. But it's, uh, you can just go out for fun with some friends and just play by yourself. Um, one of my favorite stories was when I got started years ago, um, I played at the zoo course at St. Pat's Island. And there was a group of guys playing with camping plays. And uh, by the end of the round, they only had one left. I think they'd thrown a bunch in the river, but just something circular, they just get out there and, and they were throwing it. I've seen people actually with rugby balls just getting out there and, and doing their version of rugby golf with the baskets. And so really it's just, you know, there's no right way of getting started. Um, there's certain ways that could help you with throwing, but as far as getting started, look at your budget. Um, I'm actually, I got a grant through the Parks Foundation Calgary in the city of Calgary, and I'm working with Calgary Disc Golf Club to actually run clinics the next couple months and everyone's going to get a free disc. And so, you know, it's only, it's worth about 10 bucks. So it's not a lot, but for some people right now, $10 is, you know, the difference between what they're going to have for dinner or enough gas in their vehicle. And so, you know, we're trying to make it accessible. Um, there's a link in there, the Calgary Disc Golf Forum. So it's very, people are very, um, open to just taking you out just showing you something we have just so we can get to people as well if that's a struggle for sure that's great to hear so as you guys um you know know when you can do those clinics just keep us informed and then we can continue to keep the community informed as well uh rob did also put up there's a facebook group as well uh for disc golf and so um check that out and you know you talk about the different communities i know just before we started people were putting up where they were from. So I know there was somebody from Airdrie. Good to hear that there's Ari and Drumheller. And the thought, everybody, of, well, the thought of getting on a plane, isn't that uh, an exciting thought, which will happen uh, hopefully soon. But the thought of instead of packing a set of golf clubs, just to pack some discs, that would be so nice and so easy and being able to do something and get active. So um, look forward to that. Uh, I believe we have a video we can show. Take a look. Well, because you get to learn on and on, and it's really fun when you throw, and every time is practice, and it helps you with your muscles and helps you learn how to do it. I've always enjoyed being outdoors in the fresh air, and disc golf gives me that opportunity of being outdoors year-round. Lots of great exercise and fresh air. It's also the perfect family sport. I have seen a two-year-old throwing discs. So this sport is great for all ages from young children all the way to grandparents. Some of my favorite things about disc golf is that it is so accessible. You can be any age, race, sex, ability, skill level, and you can have like an awesome time playing disc golf. And that I think that's one of my favorite things. I've introduced hundreds of people into the sport and so many of my friends now, they, they love it. Even if it's, they just play recreationally, some of them actually even play competitively where in the past they said they never would, but now they do, which is kind of funny. One of my favorite feelings when actually playing disc golf is when you're going for the chains and you're going for a chain run and all the stars kind of line up especially if it's forehand, and you go for the throw, your whole card is quiet, and they're watching your disc as it flies in the air. And everybody knows, they just know that it's going, and as it gets closer to the basket, everyone's just going, ah, and as it hits the chains, you just all lose your mind. And I think that is actually the best feeling. It's, um, I guess it's almost, it's like getting an ease, but I think that is probably one of the the coolest feelings you can get is like running a super, super long throw into the chains. That's awesome. Um, Melissa, I'm going to ask you, um, they talk about all seasons. So can people, I would think you could do it in the winter. Is this an all year sport? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's an all season sport. Um, it's a lot more popular in the summer. There's definitely fair weather players, um, but I was playing all winter. You just dress accordingly. You've got your, your gloves, your uh, hand warmers. Um, and then there's also indoor putting leagues as well. So hence the basket. <laughs> um, Rob, some of that footage. Uh, so that's, I mean, it looked like we were going to watch a, a PGA championship. And, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm not being fair to the disc golf community because I didn't realize how big it was internationally. 
Um, is that is that a normal crowd for a large tournament? Yeah, so I think the European Open a couple of years ago set a record. They had, I think, 10,000 people watching over the course of the weekend. 5,000, I think, in the final. Um, the video, the last video you actually watched, that was the most viewed video that's ever been uh, posted online. So that's Philo Brathwaite. That's a, I think it was an alb albatross in a par five. An amazing throw. And that made it on like the PGA.com website. You, disc golf has been on Sports Center multiple times. There's actually been disc golf so full rounds on ESPN in the fall. Um, and they continue to make inroads with, and obviously like things have changed. It's not the traditional streaming um, or sorry on cable that it was, you know, we're doing a lot more online they actually have a disc golf network. And I think their goal this year was 5,000. They've already passed 20,000 subscribers. Uh, and that's mostly disc golfers paying a fee per month, but um, there's millions and millions and millions of views on disc golf videos. The top disc golf production company has over a quarter of a million subscribers on YouTube. And so every time they post a video, they're getting hundreds of thousands of views, you know, the, the next day they're doing live streaming. It's, it's really fascinating to watch. And now with drones, people, when they watch a disc golf tournament versus a golf tournament, it's tough to tell the difference. A lot of times the commentators have gotten a lot of practice, so they're getting a lot better. It's, uh, it's really exciting to see that happen. So James, um, you know, as we're looking at wrapping up, uh, if somebody were to go online after this session, want to order uh, some discs, what do you recommend? You know, what, what do people start with? Do they get sort of a whole set? What, you know, what, what am I going to go buy? This, this game can be played with one disc or as Rob's mentioned, 10,000 to 40,000. I think ultimately we'll get you started with one disc. And in terms of where to go or what disc to get, Melissa's mentioned that the retailers have been fantastic. I still say, you know, for that person on this call or who's seeing this video, just drop by our Facebook page or even just reach out to a disc golfer at a park. And as soon as you meet somebody from the community, uh, you're going to get a lot of help. I think the best tip in disc golf is to meet somebody that is, is playing disc golf. Uh, because the people are so nice, helpful. You know, Katrina, if we met, um, I would even lend you some of my discs. We get them clean and sanitized. You can give them a try, you know, because part of it too is with the equipment, you don't know how it flies until you throw it. Um, and one of those things to do, unfortunately, sometimes is you have to buy them to try to figure that out, but you make some good friends in disc golf and, you know, they might have some discs that they've graduated through that they can share a trade with you. And, and I think that's probably the best way to do it. You know, my favorite story from last year, and I welcome anybody on this chat or in this video to do that, is a gentleman by the name of Adam Martin uh, put a note up on the Facebook page last year. Wanted to try it, didn't know anything about it. I met him at one of the local retailers at, I think, about four o'clock in the afternoon. We picked out some discs for him. We got him signed up with a membership. He was playing, he made his first putt while we, he drove to the, the we met him at the course. He made his first putt. He made his first throw, got it on video. He was playing in the league uh, that evening. So less than three hours from the time we met at the store. Um, he's addicted. He's hooked. He loves it. And the silver line and all that story is actually now he's spearheading some of the initiatives in Airdrie to get Airdrie, of course. And he's spoken with town council um, in one of their meetings only about a month ago. And so who knows from this, who sees this video, who might be sort of the next big community leader within our sport. And so I would, I, I put out the open invitation that if anybody's looking to play, curious to play, uh, you know, reference this, this chat or this discussion, this panel discussion in our Calgary Facebook page, and I will personally take them out and we'll get them started. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for, uh, for the word of advice. Um, final thought uh, to the viewers, uh, Melissa, I will ask you and uh, finish up with Rob. So any final advice for anybody out there? I think just to um, have fun, make a lot of connections within the community. Like I said, everyone is so helpful um, and willing to share their knowledge. Um, and then just advice to the females as well. Just be confident and, and empowered to take the leadership or volunteer role. Awesome. Thanks. Rob? Ooh, the best thing I like to say is when a ball dreams, it dreams of the Frisbee. And so for many of us, when we throw that disc, that's going to be the closest we ever get to flying. And it can just be a really magical thing. 
whether you watch somebody else get a hole in one or you get a hole in one, you're almost more excited when someone else gets a hole in one. And that's really what I love about the sport is just getting outside and meeting people, playing, just ex exploring what's possible. Okay, great. Well, thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Melissa, Rob, James. Uh, thanks for sharing your incredible sport with the community. Um, to everybody on this, we will continue to um, keep you informed when things open up. A um, lot of links were in the chat. We will post all of those. All of this will be on Sport Calgary's website. Uh, if you have any other questions, please uh, reach out to us. Uh, we have one uh, more video, so take a look. Start off in a position and do your best shot. And like, I would tell them like examples how to do it and how much fun it is to encourage them to do it. Play conservatively. All of us for the first, you know, few years that we play disc golf and, you know, I'm still guilty of it now is we're always trying to go for the chains. My biggest advice is if you want to get better, lay it up. Don't be a hero lay it up and you'll you'll have a better game and you'll actually play better if if you can just you know take down the pride a little bit and just lay up your disc right to the bottom of the basket instead of trying to go for it every time even though if you play with me i will always tell you to go for it but don't don't listen to me lay it up <laughs> don't let fear hold you back i didn't i'm going to be 78 years old in june and I play every chance I get. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we can see that uh, this sport is for all ages. Um, again, any other questions, uh, let us know and we will keep you guys informed. Um, I just want to let everybody know that uh, we've been doing these every two weeks, but in two weeks we have Sport Calgary's AGM. So I would encourage everybody if you can join us at 1 p.m. on April 22nd. We're actually going to be starting off with... Um, uh, a talk from a keynote from Councillor Chahal, who is a huge uh, fan of sport, a great speaker, a great leader in our city. And he's going to be talking um, about uh, empowering our community through sport. So if you can join us, uh, please do. That's April 22nd at 1 p.m. So it will be the next, next week, April 29th at noon. We will have our next Faces of Calgary Sport. And we're going to be talking about funding for uh, Calgary families. So please uh, send this out to your networks. We're gonna be talking to representatives from Kids Sport, Calgary Flames Sports Bank and Jumpstart. So again, uh, you know, as we're coming out of the pandemic, we wanna make sure that our community is active in any way. So uh, tune in for that one. So thanks everybody for joining us. Again, thanks to our panel. Uh, we look forward to going out and trying this and um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. So everybody stay safe, enjoy and have a great rest of your Thursday. Thank you.